Welcome to a quick news briefing about what's going on today, March 30th, 2020. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Survival Preparedness for Beginners. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to give you some news that's going on today. March 30th, 2020, and this all comes from the New York Times, Washington Post, and uh, uh, I believe that is it for today that I pulled these off the internet. And you guys can find a lot of this information right on the internet. Uh, if you go on YouTube, a great channel to watch is Ice Age Farmer. Um, he has a video blog, and um, he does a lot of great information. He shows you a lot of great information that you don't see in the mainstream and uh, where you can find it, and he shows it right there to you. Well, let's get going. President Trump extends the distancing guidelines, which we all know. Everyone in the United States must avoid non-essential travel or gathering from groups of more than 10. Yep, we know that too. For at least another month, and perhaps until June. Now they're saying June. The president said on Sunday he had earlier expressed a desire to relax the coronavirus guidelines and get the country back to work by Easter, April 12th. Mr. Trump's announcement came after two of his top doctors advising him warned that many as of 200,000 people in America could die during the outbreak if he was to release and get people back to work by Easter because it would spread rampantly as it is now. It'd be even worse. The first of 22 scheduled flights carrying medical supplies from China arrived in New York on Sunday. White House officials said the flights would funnel in much needed goods across the U.S. I guess, you know, because we can't make stuff here or whatever, or maybe they had a surplus. Well, they make it all, so they should have the surplus. Amid calls for more transparency in the U.S., public health experts are debating, get this, debating, how much information on the spread of the virus should be released to the American public? I don't know about else, but that just throws up a big, huge red flag because they're not telling us everything. So you all got to watch your backs. Over the weekend, they examined how a delay in widespread testing has set the U.S. back in its response to the pandemic due to the lack of supplies. Gee, like we didn't know that one. Even after Beijing got involved, local officials set narrow criteria for confirming cases, leaving out information that could provide clues that the virus was spreading among humans in China. Hospitals were ordered to count only patients with known connections to the source of the outbreak. That's what they called it in the very beginning in December, the seafood market. Doctors also had to have their cases confirmed by bureaucrats before their reporting to the higher-ups. There's the first problem. As the United States, Europe, and the rest of the world struggle to contain the coronavirus pandemic, China has set, has cast itself as a role model in bringing down a raging outbreak to the point where the country has begun to lift all kinds of restrictions on the life that are now imposed around the world, aka you can't do anything, you can't go anywhere, but you got plenty of toilet paper to wipe your butt. The tri the tr this triumph narrative obscures the early failures in reporting cases, squandered time that could have been used to slow infections in China before they exploded into a worldwide pandemic. That's where we are now. According to the rules, this, of course, should have been reported. A retired healthcare official involved in establishing the direct reporting system said in an interview, of course they should have seized on it, found it, gone to understand it, and contained it. You think? Aggressive actions just a week earlier in mid-January could have cut the number of infections by two-thirds according to a recent study whose authors include an expert from China's Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Another study found that if China had moved to control the outbreak three weeks earlier, it might have pre prevented 95% of the country's cases and controlled the virus. 
you think again? I regret that back then I didn't keep screaming out at the top of my voice. One of the doctors at the China Central Hospital who spotted cases in December said in an interview, I often thought to myself, what would have happened if I could wind back time? I think I'll keep my thoughts to myself on that one. Kind of keep it kind of clean. The alarm system was ready. Scarred by the SARS epidemic that erupted in 2002, China had created an infectious disease reporting system that officials said was world class. I think we've heard that term from our president too. Uh, fast, thorough, and just as important and then you made from meddling. Nobody can distract from this. Hospitals could input patients' details into a computer and instantly notify government health authorities in Beijing where officers are trained to spot and smother contagious outbreaks before they spread. It didn't work, did it? After doctors in China began treating clusters of patients stricken with a mysterious pneumonia in December, the reporting was supposed to have been automatic. Instead, hospitals deferred to local health officials over a political adverse to sharing bad news with Beijing, withheld the information about cases from the national reporting system, keeping Beijing in the dark and delaying the response. The central health authorities first learned about the AIDS outbreak, not from the reporting system that they had put in place and that was world-renowned, but after unknown whistleblowers leaked in two internal documents online. Well, look at that, another whistleblower. Thank God he blew his whistle, but he didn't blow it a little sooner. Now, now we go into what this, you know, we all know what's going on. You know, we all know this thing's spreading. We all know what we have to do. You know, you got to have your distance from everybody, your social distancing, you know, wear your mask and gloves. If you're going to go to the store, especially if you live in a hot spot. And, um, but now we're getting down to the, the food part of this, which I've talked about in some of my videos. The United Nations, as of today, uh, the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization warned of a global food shortage caused by measures stemming from the spread of the coronavirus. Okay, individuals can also play an important role by avoiding panic buying and hoarding of food and cutting down on food waste. Buying too much fresh farm produ produce that goes often bad before it can be eaten will just put a hurting on the food supply problem. Individuals should only buy what they need to avoid food waste. Now right now is the time to be wasting food, people. I mean, if you're gonna buy it, and if you can't use it, then figure out some way to preserve it. Either, you know, can it, freeze it, whatever you gotta do to make sure that you, you, know, you can make this stuff last. Uh, in the UK, some uh, farming leaders have called for a land army of workers to replace a shortfall of workers that could reach 80,000, according to one estimate. If the 60,000 seasonal workers recruited from abroad in normal years are prevented from coming and if some of the British workers fall ill. The Country Land and Business Association, better known as the CLA, representing more than 30,000 UK landowners and rural farms made a similar call last week for government to make it easier for people that have been put out of work by the lockdown to find seasonal work on farms, said the president of the CLA. Now, I don't know about you people, but uh, there's a reason why uh, we bring in all these farm workers from Mexico and, and all these other countries to come here and help harvest all our produce and everything else is because the American people, I think nowadays, think that's work that's below them. Even though that is the, some of the most important work, you're talking our food supply. I know um, when I lived in Vermont, every year when the apples would come in, which is a huge crop up there, that's their one of their big big crops is apples, um, they bust them in from Mexico. 
to pick the apples because they couldn't find people, hire people in the state to do it. So they would bus them in, they'd pick all the apples and everything else, do the harvest, and then they would bus them out, you know? But it may come down to where people out there are gonna have to do something they may not wanna do, but they gotta put food on the table and a roof over your head. Think about that, people. Empty shelves in supermarkets should not be much of a concern. It's not a supply problem, it's a logistics problem. So now it's not supply, it's logistics. We can't figure out how to get it to where it has to go. Don't they have computers for that? There is, there is enough supply for all as long as everyone stays calm and stops hoarding. We may tend to waste food if we hoard more than required and hoarding would also artificially increase food prices because of the pr pressure on the supply chain and the logistics problem. Gee. I tell you. Measures by the national governments during the coronavirus could provoke food shortages around the world, per the UN's food body has warned. Harvests have been good, and the outlook for staple crops is promising, but a shortage of field workers brought on by the virus crisis and a move towards tariffs and export bans mean problems could quickly appear in the coming weeks. The worst that can happen is that the government restriction, the government's restriction on the flow of food. All measures are against free trade will be counterproductive. Now is not the time for restrictions on putting in place trade barriers. Now is the time to protect the flow of food around the world. Governments must resist calls from some quarters to protect their own food supply and restricting exports, and some have begun to do so. Kakistan, for instance, according to the reports from Bloomberg, has banned exports of wheat flour, of which it is one of the world's biggest sources, as well as restrictions on buckwheat and vegetables, including onions, carrots, and potatoes. Vietnam, the world's third biggest rice exporter, has temporarily suspended rice export contracts. And Russia, the world's biggest wheat exporter, may also threaten to put restriction exports as it has done before in the past. In the position of the U.S. in doubt given Donald Trump's eagerness for a trade war and all the other commodities. Trade barriers will create extreme volatility in the markets. They will make the situation worse. That's what we observe in food crisis. One more quick little thing here. We're just about done with this lovely news of the day. As grocery stores in the U.S. have been bombarded with cons uh, customers racing to stock up on produce and non-perishable items and paper goods amid the the coronavirus outbreak, you know, the old good old TP, still don't get that. However, American food supply experts, including the Department of Agricultural Secretary Sonny Perdue, has warned that Americans should not be concerned about immediate food shortages. Immediate, that's a key word, all right? The supply chain isn't broken. The warehouses are pushing out as much inventory as possible in a 24 hour period. Well, people, to break this down into a nutshell, okay? China dropped the ball. Now everybody else out here is all paying for it. And what's gonna happen in the end, um, you know, <clears throat> as I just said, you know, in the immediate future, yeah, we probably could be all right. What about the long term? Where is that going to come into play? That's going to be the question long term. So, my name is Charles. I brought you a quick news briefing today. Um, if I see any more interesting things that come across the wire on the internet there, like I said, feel free. You can go out there. You can find all this stuff right on the internet. A lot of stuff you don't hear about in the news right now because it's all about the bug. So, until next time, my name is Charles. This is Survival Preparedness for Beginners, and I'll catch you all on the flip side.